Oh, uh, Android gadget and ConfigFest gadget. So um, I guess probably uh, just get kind of a brief background on the Android gadget would be good, and then do some brief background on ConfigFest gadget, and maybe the iterations through CCG and that sort of thing as well would be good. Um, and then uh, I kind of want to cover just kind of what the Android gadget devices are that we need to support, and um, then try to just kind of uh, uh, run through the details of what's left. So um, I guess, go ahead. This is uh, Benoit and uh, Andre. <laughs> Oh, you want to present um, the gadget driver, the Android yes, gadget a driver? Background on the yeah. So the Android gadget driver is a special uh, gadget driver where you can configure um, the function that you use. So a gadget driver, it's a USB uh, driver that manages a configuration. And the configuration is made of multiple functions. So for example, uh, uh, Ethernet, uh, serial, and the Android gadget driver has a SysFS interface that lets you choose which function you want to use. So on Android, we use that, for example. Um, by default, we enable uh, MTP, that is a media transfer protocol to copy uh, media to your phone. And for example, when you enable uh, USB debugging to debug your, your phone uh, to install application, you can enable um, ADB, which is our debugging interface. And then you have two functions, MTP and ADB. Um, and I guess, uh, as far as ConfigFS, I don't know if you want to traverse kind of the history of the CCG in the stage or something. So, uh, maybe just start with the guys. <laughs> OK, so uh, traditionally, so far, uh, the gadget's composition, that is what configurations there are and what functions there are and what is gadget's identity, like vendor ID, product ID, uh, has been hard-coded. So if you want a, a gadget which, con which uh, has one configuration and uses a set of functions, you create a kernel module. You want uh, another gadget which uses one configuration but a slightly different set of functions, you create a kernel module, and so on. And it's not the preferred way of doing things. Uh, so proliferation of gadgets happening just because some static data needs to be specified in a different way from a gadget to a gadget is not good. And um, so the idea is to separate code from data. So we, we provide only building blocks out of which the user at runtime composes their gadgets. And uh, ConfigFS comes in handy uh, when it comes to telling the kernel at runtime what configurations we want and which functions we want in each configuration. My, my understanding, at least, is that the ConfigFS provides very much uh, the same sort of functionality that the Android gadget driver does. Um, and it's more just kind of the details of how it's manipulated that uh, made it more kind of upstream palatable. Um, the things that are also kind of combined in the Android gadget is that there's a number of specific devices that they add. And I've tried to list, I think, all of them there. I don't know. Am I missing any here? <laughs> um, but basically, um, there's a number of them that are already upstream uh, uh, gadget devices that uh, can be combined with other uh, multi-gadget uh, drivers. Um, FunctionFS is interesting because it basically allows the user space to implement the uh, uh, gadget driver. Um, and basically just kind of passes that through. Um, and the ADBD, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, converted uh, to use FunctionFS. So um, you know, for instance, that's something where you can get ADB running on FunctionFS on a current mainline kernel. Um, and uh, there's still kind of the in-kernel ADB, MTV, MTP, Android accessory, and audio source, which are all um, Android specific still. Yeah. Um, so I guess some of the things I was trying to figure out is one is that do we need to do a similar conversion pushing uh, MTP accessory and audio source 
out into user space for FunctionFS, or are these things that you think are going to actually have benefit being um, merged into the, the kernel as uh, gadgets on their own? Yeah. So, um, ADBR has already been removed. Um, audio source, I think there's a new function in the kernel that is called uh, UAC2. That uh, <laughs> me neither, but I think it provides the same functionality with a different user space interface okay. that we could use. And it's something you're all right with, as far as you know. <laughs> so as, as far as you know, you're all right with migrating to that. Um, no, it's not planned, oh, okay. but we could, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. so, no objections, I guess. No. Right. Um, and then uh, the Android accessory and MTP are those. Do you have the feeling they should? Be better lived in user land on the function of those. Uh, they could. There's um, one optimization that we're doing for uh, FMTP is um, we read the file and uh, copy it directly from the kernel. So, so we avoid the context switches with uh, user space. So I don't know if uh, switching to, config, uh, to function FS would uh, okay. reduce performance. Um, all right. So I guess that those would be. Items that you wouldn't have any objection with someone submitting upstream for merging, but just individually. Uh, well, if you implement MTP in user space, you don't need anything in the kernel. We, we already have function FS in the kernel, so it's on, it would be only user space. Okay, so you're okay with that. Yeah. Um, with the Android accessory one. Uh, for Android accessory, we did something special that is not supported yet. Is, uh, Maybe I should explain what is accessory. I don't think anybody, everybody knows. Um, uh, Android accessory, open accessory has been created because you have a lot of phones that don't support OTG. That is a USB when you, that can play the role of a gadget or a USB host. You can plug regular USB devices. But we still wanted those phones to be able to, to accept some kind of accessories. So the idea of uh, open accessory is that um, the accessory is actually a USB host, like a PC. But uh, it's a special host that will send uh, to the device a special control request that says uh, to the phone, I'm not a regular host, I'm a, an accessory, and it says also what type of accessory it is so that we know which application to start to control the accessory. So we need something special to catch uh, this uh, special control request before the accessory function is enabled and send um, an event to user space. Yeah. Is there a point to keep an accessory around like that? I mean, that design basically is assuming you don't have OTG. Every single chip I see has yeah. OTG. The chip has OTG, but the problem is usually sometimes board manufacturer don't uh, don't allow to power the bus. So, so you cannot really support OTG uh, in this case. And we have uh, several phones uh, that have this problem. Yeah. yeah, since since the accessory is host, it's going to charge your phone. So especially uh, we have open accessory too that support audio and uh, HID. So it's used for uh, docs. And then, so it's practical because it's going to charge your phone while it's good yeah. Other question I have is the audio source. Right? Um, how does that differ from? Audio the source is used by the uh, accessory for accessory too. Yeah. Okay. So it's layered. Hmm? So it's layered basically? Yeah, I think so. And, and, and so the gadget audio, relative to something like a gadget audio, I believe is on upstream. Like, is there, I guess, what, what, what's the key difference between those? Um, I don't think there's uh, any difference. No. It's, okay, just, so it's, it's just at the time we designed uh, Accessory 2, um, there was only uh, Audio Class 1 and not Audio Class 2, that is a uh, UAC 2. We could migrate, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is there any yeah. But it's just uh, the uh, user space uh, interface is different, so we'll okay. we have to What's change user space, yeah. All right. Great. Um, so 
uh, I guess as far as the configFS side of things, um, they're still needed. So I believe FunctionFS is still a work in progress, or? Yes, FunctionFS is still a work in progress. So and you support serial and Ethernet and a couple of these, but that's, that's it right now, right? Uh, Quite a lot of functions, serial, generic serial, um, some weird functions like OBEX and Phonet, uh, all fra flavors of Ethernet. Um, what else? Yeah, so if we take a look at this list, Basically, it's serial, RNS, Ethernet, ACM. Most of the stuff that's already upstream, is mm -hmm. that what you're talking about? Um, uh, mass storage has been uh, submitted but uh, it's not merged yet, and I have rebased it for 3.12, and I guess I will be sending it out uh, soon. Okay. Um, so I guess really the function of this uh, is the key. It's probably the last thing that the PC to be able to do in certain mm -hmm. conditions. That sounds like a reasonable point. I mean, I'm not sure if there's very much contention here, so it's not trying to be still. Yeah, no, for me, uh, to switch to ConfigFS, it's more a uh, user space uh, change to, uh, to, yeah, because it's a completely different interface uh, to configure uh, the function. No, uh, there's not any, any particular barriers in the user space that would block the switching. Uh, as far as you know. We control the user space, so we can do whatever we want, so it's not us. Uh, Actually, recently uh, there has been some activity on the mailing, uh, USB mailing list, and uh, a man called Matt Porter from Linaro contributed. Uh, uh, I, I, I asked him, and he told me he wouldn't come. Uh, and he submitted a preliminary version of a lib gadget, user space library. Because uh, as far as ConfigFS is concerned, uh, it is non-goal of ConfigFS to be very convenient for use with command line. It should be just possible. And so it is even expected that the user space tool, tools uh, will be created to, to create, keep track of, and remove gadgets. Uh, maybe uh, one more thing. Um, setting up a basic gadget, one configuration, one function, takes about 15 shell commands. It's possible, yeah, perfectly possible. <laughs> Yeah, one thing I was wondering, which mount point uh, are you using to mount uh, configFS? Slash config, or it's, uh, is I, there a standard? Uh, there's no standard as far, as far as I know. I'm using CFG located in my current directory because it's convenient to me. Okay. It, it, it's totally user space uh, specific. Uh, so maybe one more thing. Uh, it's not. I think it's not likely that the Android gadget will make it into main like a mainline kernel. Uh, so last year I contributed. I, I took Android gadget basically and uh, removed all references to Android to make it look generic and kindly asked Greg to accept it. And Greg, being a kind man, accepted it. And there are two ways out of staging. To kernel proper, proper or out. Guess what happened? Hello. It's out, and I fully support Greg doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, I think in that case it was um, because of the interface uh, to manipulate. People were wanting to see the config. Yes, configFS should be used okay. instead of sysfs, but, but that's, that's one thing. Uh, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, the Android gadget still uses a predefined set of functions which can be used. Yes, yeah. yeah so, so, so at runtime you only decide which function to activate, but it's only from a predefined set. So it, it basically boils down to being hard-coded. 
I mean, it's, it's decided at, at compile time what functions can be chosen. Right. So I, I guess um, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. Uh, so I guess the proposal is that to merge the Android gadget driver, but to merge the Android uh, gadget functions. Yes. And then to use that as configuration. Yes, yes. Precisely. And because. Um, I don't know those functions well, so. I already tried to upstream uh, FMTP, for example, and it's been refused because you can use function FS to do that from user space. So. This isn't really directly relevant, I think, to configure this. It probably isn't relevant to Android either, but I just wanted to ask. Um, one thing that's currently missing from any of the, uh, either Android or the, or the main kernel, as far as I know, is in a, a situation where you've got a device with more than one a USB device interface or device controller. In that case, uh, a gadget just gets bound to whatever controller the kernel feels like, right? And what we need is some way to, to control it. So. Uh, with ConfigFS, uh, it's not the case. Uh, so to uh, you issue a series of uh, creating directories, uh, writes, uh, and symbolic links, and then you need to activate the gadget somehow. And it, it is done by writing a UDC name to a UDC attribute in ConfigFS. And so that way we decide which particular USB device controller we want to be bound to. for the discussion. Um, thanks everybody for participating and uh, joining us. Um, I guess with that we're heading out a little early. <laughs> All right. I, I do have one thing associated with Android I'd like to ask about a little bit. Um, one of the problems that, one of the issues that we do deal with uh, at Intel is that uh, we have a, a fairly large number of devices that have different um, platform IDs and different serial numbers and configurations and uh, uh, hardware bomb configurations from time to time. and and we, we attempt to use the same user mode on, on all of our targets as much as possible, or at least the same code base we build out of the same code base. And that results in a need to communicate basically board-specific information up to, the, up to user mode in, in some context. Um, a prototypical example of this type of data is the USB gadget, the, the ADB serial number. Today, that gets put, that gets defined on the kernel command line, and communi communicated up to use to the init program, <clears throat> and then uses that to push it back down to the ADB gadget, uh, and then that way. And uh, you know, we we've taken that to a a, a, a couple next levels <laughs> 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 with, with with things like. 
oh, this device has you know, dual SIM, and this device doesn't, and this one has an audience chip, and this one doesn't. And, and you know, so different firmware needs to be loaded from the user mode based on uh, the device configuration. So there, there's a number of things like this, and um, uh, I just feel that this sort of thing, everybody who does any real devices probably has to deal with. And um, I don't use a device tree. What's a device tree? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait, you have a problem. You don't have a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. I mean, there's all sorts of ways to solve it. And, and, and actually, that's what we do. You know, we have a, a custom record structure that we just expose through SysFS. But the middleware developers, they really want to be able to get access to this data as an Android property. They'd like it to be a prop. And then, you, then we run into scaling issues with how many properties you can wedge into Android, because the property database thing in Android isn't made for, yeah? Actually, so in Android, that's factor. Yep. And so I believe this, I don't remember what the maximum size is now, but it does scale much better. Oh, prop, oh. Cool. Oh, yeah. Properties are now basically unlimited. Oh, wow. Oh, great. Well, that solves a lot of trouble. Says, hey, I guess stick it in there. Okay. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How about a, how about a protocol for setting read-only properties uh, in early boot? So we want to add a whole bunch of RO. Read -only What's that? Oh, oh there's no read no. RO props anymore. I mean, if you're writing to it, it's not a read-only property. I want I want to uh, yeah I want to I want to well the serial numbers are the the props that come bubbling in through the through the through the kernel command line. Those are examples. The, the the three or four parameters that can come in through the kernel command line are just like what I want. I, you know, I want yeah I, I got I got a handful I want to stick in there not not just those but I don't want to I don't want to use the kernel command line to get there because I really think that's kind of hokey. But yeah, you know, and we we've, we've we've had space issues. <laughs> that as well. Yeah. Well, you'd have to modify the init program to pull it out of the device tree and stuff it into RO prop or, or something. You'd Well, most of them are, and, and they're used, and they're, yeah, and they're, and, and to be fair, we're mostly using them to pick which, which binary blob firmware to load into the IP blocks at, at early boot. Yeah, yeah, Wi-Fi is a good example, yeah. What's that? We did that? Yeah, so it'll load the slash back. Okay, slash well then I guess we're done. It's only not prop. Whatever properties you want in there, just flash Oh. Do you remember that going in? Okay. Use, use. Intel's a big company. <laughs> you never know what's going on there. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's the company, I think it's me. Uh.